Everyone, hey, this is Bruce Marson once again from Sunridge of Nevada coming to you with another video. Uh, first of all, a couple of shout outs. We want to thank everyone that signed up for our webinar that we had several weeks ago. It went fantastic. Uh, the anticipation and the participation was great. The comments were fantastic. And people that watched it basically said they helped them get a great understanding of the topic at hand. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, we want to let people understand why was it that we decided to go with this rapper and bring up this particular song? Well, there's a reason for it. Uh, this person came up with a topic that's very near and dear to our heart, and we want to really go over and explain it to you. Okay, here we go. This young man, his name is Ben Goldberg, okay? And his name, Tolkien, is his stage name. It came out from when he was growing up. He felt he was a Tolkien kid token white kid, and then token Jewish kid growing up in his neighborhood. So hence the name is when you're token, you're alone, hence the name. Okay, where does this song come from? Exception. Okay, the reason why we like the song Exception is because it talks about a topic that's also to us very, very severe today, school bullying. Now, going back to Ben, how he got started. Okay, it says here that he was young, he dealt with a language disability, depression and anxiety. He was able to overcome all of them. And he started writing at 10 years old. He goes, when I was young, I didn't want to talk about it because I was worried people wouldn't take me seriously. It didn't start, as, didn't start out as rap, but it was more poetry than diary. Okay, fine. By middle school, he's doing his own mixtapes and falling in with local producers. With the years of writing and grinding, got some big names and he got big. Go to the attention of T. Payne, and they're all up. And here's another thing too. He actually got a phone call from Mark Wahlberg and said, hey, how can I help you? You're my favorite rapper. Not bad company. Finally, he was on a morning radio show called Sway in the Morning. He gets on there. I watched the video. Blows the place up. So powerful, so inspirational that one of the hosts, female hosts, starts to cry because she got so emotional over it. And... Um, just amazing to me, and he hangs out with T-Pain, Fred Durst, Mark Wahlberg, he's had a successful tour, and he's releasing more and more music. And what did he come out with? This particular song, Exception. And here's what's going to start happening. We want people to watch the next webinar, which is going to be based about school bullying. So I'm going to cover the song, I'm going to go over, I'm going to break down the highlights but I'm not going to go into it as much as I used to because I want to start driving people towards the webinar. I want parents to please, please, please watch this video and sign up for the webinar so you can learn what it is you have to be doing to protect your kid from bullying that goes on in the school. Please don't think it doesn't happen in your school, whether it's inner city, outer city, urban, country, private school, Catholic school, Jewish school, Muslim school, School for Future Farmers of America. It don't make a difference. Bullying now goes on everywhere. And it's in all kinds of forms. It's insidious. And not just the people that are getting bullied that by other kids that are doing it to you. Unfortunately now with sexual harassment, teachers, you know, they're doing things too. That they're doing things in a, that's bullying in its own way. So we want people to start becoming aware of what are your rights, what are your legal obligations, and just as a parent, how do you protect your kid? That's the whole issue. Okay, so here we go into the song. All right, again, song exception, young man called Token, 18 years old, incredible to me. So, starts off with a guitar solo, and then you go see on the video, the video comes along with the song, there's a beat down in the locker room. And, you know, boom, these two kids, two main kids are the ones beating him up all the time and harassing him. And they show a scene in the classroom where he's kind of spacey, probably like I was saying, worrying about getting beaten up at lunchtime, where in his free period, teacher's going like this to him, hey, hey, you, and he's like kind of in a fog. He sits in the back, white t-shirt, a little bit strange, and he's getting the attention of these two guys that are thumping him. What's the teacher's response? Zero. And that's something I want people to be aware of is to not to rely on the school every single time for help. you got to be self-aware. Okay, so then it goes like this. Um, there they go, harass his kid so easily. His name is Andy. He grew up the street, down the, right down the street from me. 
Oh, no doubt. The people who bully know you. It's not like it's going to randomize a bull, you know, guy you rarely meet. It happens, but the main form of bullying is going to come from people that know you, that go to school with you. So we're talking about school bullying. Well, it's not going to be a stranger. It's the kid that doesn't fit in, that's from the neighborhood, or that gets bust in, or gets on special ed, or has an IEP, or is in resource room, or is in a wheelchair. Those are the kids that are more likely to be bullied or capping than anybody, but those are the kids, the kids that are shy, the kids that are overweight, the ones that don't, quote, quote, fit in. So I barely knew him. I just see him in school by passing me. I barely knew him, though. Usually followed by two kids giggling in back of him. I don't know why I feel the need to interfere, and I'll be honest. The kid is obviously a little weird. Hey, we all go through adolescence. We all have things that are wrong with us, and kids are massively insecure. But today it's a whole new world. Now they take it out on people with much more viciousness due to cyber, you know, bullying and the and the iPhone and your phone, your cell phone. It's much more insidious and eight million platforms to humiliate you, to embarrass you. It's a different world. You see all the kind of hide, no more hiding. Click, 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 send it, you know, make a funny emoji, and boom, this person's now ostracized. The kids I'll see a little weird. He's got a stutter. Plus, always talks to himself, but it's clear to me they shouldn't mess with him. He probably wishes they'd disappear. Like, yeah, he's different, so he ain't causing harm to anyone. And what Ben is doing, what Tolkien is doing, is an excellent job of setting up the mood to see where this is all going to go, how it's all going to play out, how it's all going to end quite, quite badly. Yeah, he might annoy them not on purpose, though. He never done something intentionally offensive like these other kids. These kids are being jerks. Now, do bullies have problems in while they're bullying and down the road later in life? Of course they do. That's a topic I'm going to discuss on the webinar, and I'll break down what happens when you bully somebody. There's pain that you cause yourself. But there's also, I'm talking now about the victim, the victim who's going to be suffering from being bullied. And he's yelling like yelling, stop being a retard when they see him mumbling. Or calling him a faggot when he's saying something awkward. Okay, yeah, the next thing you see is he's in the library, walking into the library. So my, my thought is, again, who's watching these kids? Because you only see a brief moment of a teacher in the video, you know, going like this, you know, pointing to him. But it's like, who in the school is watching what's going on? And again, something that I dealt with as going as a, as a clinical social worker, I'm going to hundreds of homes and working inpatient, working outpatient, there were times I had to put hands on people. Like, back off, back off, back off. I worked at a group home part-time for a number of years, and it was amazing to me. First, the first thing, you're like a little bit stunned. How can people act this way? Then you get used to it. The big, you know, thump the small. The powerful beat up the weak. And the dozens of times I had to put hands on people, just back off, back off, back off. Leave this kid alone. You know, and I was, you know, I was doing this before going like this. Like, a lot of times people do this. You know, clicky-click, session's over, clicky-click, I'm walking out. Oh, mayhem's about to erupt. I'm not going to get involved. That's not my job. You know you know what? It is your job. And if you don't get involved, if you don't show something about it, you're part of the problem. Plenty of times I didn't go to, I didn't go to sessions or go to the group home expecting, like, I'm going to get into a fist fight. I'm going to have to pull kids down. But unfortunately, more often than not, more often than not, things happen, things erupted, and I told people, back off, leave him alone, get off him, stop threatening him, let him go to the bathroom, let him go to bed at night. Well, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You know what? If you got a problem, step out of the room, let's go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Because you know what? You don't have the right to dehumanize somebody. Step in. And this is a message for the adults watching this video about your children, and I'm hoping you're going to watch the webinar as well, is understand how important an adult role is in stopping bullying from happening from the beginning. You're in the library, a kid sits down, he falls on his butt, kids are laughing at him, so one of the bullies reaches down to give him a hand, so he pushes the hand away, so the bully's like, oh, you don't think it's funny? You know, he starts cursing at him, you know, F, 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 you know, you see the mumbling of the words. Oh, what a shock. You're not part of the enjoyment of being humiliated and being debased. You're not going along with it. you got a problem. No, you got the problem because I said I wasn't going to take it anymore. So, yeah, he lives with it, but he shouldn't have to any longer. No one should have to because he's just a kid like any of us is the next line. And here, matter of fact, next time I see him, I'm going to say something and have his back. Okay, here's the thing about have his back. 
No one is telepathic as far as I know. They don't know what you're thinking. You got to be dem demonstrative. You got to be demonstrative and let somebody know that you're doing something for them. I never expected the kids to go when I protected their butt to like thank me and hug me. They were too embarrassed and ashamed that I hadn't stepped in in the first place. I didn't care. That was my job as the adult. I taught also. And I watched the playground, I watched the lunchroom, I watched the hallways, I watched the stairways, I watched the back of the classrooms. Hey, what's going on? You know, stand up. Do something about it. Show that you're involved. So when I, I'm going to say something and have his back, it means nothing. And at the end of the video, he shows what it means by nothing, by how this kid, Andy, reacts to the kids bullying him and Ben slash Token just sitting in the classroom as well because he's in the classroom not being involved as well. He sees it. He walks by the events. He's part of all the events, but he's a bystander. He's a bystander. And when you're a bystander, you're not adding anything to it. I understand bystander thinking. Oh, I don't want to get involved. I can be the next target. Don't make fun of me. Um, you know, I'm worried, I'm ashamed, I don't want to be picked on. I get all these things, okay? I don't want to be a tattletale. And especially if they've told an adult, hey, Mr. Bruce, something's happening. You know, this guy's getting thumbed, she's getting her hair pulled, they're giving him a swirly in, in, the, in the bathroom, and I don't do anything about it. I don't do anything about it, so like, why even bother? Because they're telling you, I've told people, I think it's like 4% of the time they've told adults, and no one's getting invested, no one's getting involved. So what happens here? Matter of fact, the next time I see, I see him, I'm going to say something and have his back. I'm going to have his back. So in the library, when he's humiliated, everyone thinks it's funny. No one steps in. Not a teacher, not a librarian, not a fellow student. Hey, you can't do that. Leave him alone. Okay? So before verse 2, what happens? You see him in his house like this. Empty house. Looks like it's cluttered. Ben does a good job setting that up, but he's kind of like this, you know, rocking. No adults. Where are the adults? Where are the adults? And you can see he's getting revved up. You can see that he's checking out because you become emotionally withdrawn. You stop doing your hobbies. You stop doing what you enjoy doing. You stop doing things that were fun for you. You don't want to leave your house because you're always like looking over your shoulder for the next time someone's going to come up and just beat the crap out of you and assault you. So you don't want to look at your phone. You don't want to look at the messages. So you become emotionally withdrawn in an empty house. What he's doing very nicely in the metaphor was he had no one to talk to. No one to talk to. So he's living in a house. you got to believe he's not living alone. The parents are oblivious to what's taking place. Parents, you got to be involved. Anyone that works in the school district, you got to be involved. Anyone that's doing any kind of coaching with young people, boys or girls, you got to be involved. You saw what happened at Michigan State, Ohio State. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see anything. You all saw, but no one responded. And even bullying goes into college. That's the crazy thing about it also. Oh, it's just a middle school thing. High school is different. No, it starts at elementary school. It goes to middle school. It goes to high school. It goes to college. And that's consequences for the rest of your life. It affects you emotionally, socially, mentally, and how you view yourself. And if you get bullied enough, trust me, as an adult, you have no confidence in yourself. You don't feel good about yourself. So how can you possibly have healthy relationships with anybody growing up around you? It doesn't make sense. So he talks of the home life empty. And then... The rest of the song starts going on, talks about, you know, the next day ain't any better, you call him out, he's a spaz, he's called a spaz, and some anger issues. He talks about the bullies. I understand bullies got problems too, and they have problems down the road as well, but that's not an excuse to bully anybody in the first place. He goes, they're just kids like us, just kids like any of us, they like to be in charge. But to be honest, the line before, most of these bullies don't mean any harm. Not true. They enjoy it. Otherwise, why bully somebody? If you didn't get any pleasure out of it, you wouldn't do it. We don't do things that give us unpleasure. We do things that give us pleasure. It's enjoyable to see you debase someone else. That's your pathology. They like attention, but they just lack guidance in getting it. So they put others down. None of us are always innocent. But that don't make it right, because again, I'm watching Andy get tortured by two of his peers with no reason in sight. It affects everything. And song and song and song and 
video after video, clip after clip, shows him he's walking in the hallway, hoodie over his face, bam, bam, right? He's at a football game, watching the game. They dump popcorn over him. Ha, 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 ha. All the kids in the stands, where are the teachers monitoring? Where are the coaches? Where are other parents? No one sees what's going on. And in the end, what happens? He comes in, last verse, not to school that morning, he comes in, strapped, blows the two kids away, and then, and then um, you get Ben, Tolkien, saying to him, hey, Andy, they're dead. You had your wish. He turned to me and said, you, you were the third on my list. And the rest of the video is about Andy going, getting beaten down the next 35, 345 to five, five minutes. And Ben slash Tolkien walking by, seeing all the stuff. He's at the football game. He walked the halls. He was, in the, he was in the locker room. He was in the library. He was in the classroom. And he did nothing. Okay. I got a million statistics to share. I want families to be watching the next webinar. It's going to be coming out real soon. We'll have a teaser. Okay. I'm going to go into depth. I got tons of information. I want to break down the video some more. Talk to you about issues that happen in our own beloved school district. Okay. CCSD may settle cases. Yeah. Cases are about teacher sexual misconduct and bullying of a young girl. And I want to tell you what you can do as a parent, you can do as a kid to protect yourself from this and to be aware of it. And guess what? If you're a bully too and you want to stop, you don't know how, this webinar is for you as well. Thank you, Sunridge of Nevada.